Hey guys, how's it going? Sam here and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be looking at the art direction and the design of the game Doom released in 2016. Now I haven't played the new Doom Eternal, I'm definitely looking forward to it, I'm a bit late to the party. But I've been recently playing the 2016 Doom and been absolutely loving the game. And I found the world building to be absolutely amazing. So. I've got some footage here that I've recorded and I'm basically going to be going through elements of the game and breaking down the design, what's really successful and that you can use in your concept art or what you should be considering to use in your concept art. So I hope this is useful for someone. Like I said, it's a bit different than what I normally create. Um, so with that, let's get into it. So I wanted to make this video because I really wanted people to understand how they can take media that they absolutely love, like games or film, and break them down to help them improve as an artist. I found myself by analysing content like this, I mean I did it recently on the YouTube channel um, analysing a painting, and I felt like maybe analysing a game is slightly more dynamic and something that maybe you might not consider. So as soon as you spend a few minutes in this game, you realise that there is an insane level of detail to absolutely everything in this game. No matter where you look, it's chairs, pipes above the ceiling, grates on the floor, the boring stuff like crates and doors, they're all amazing, they all fit perfectly within the world, and they all look real. You've got to imagine that this facility you're in existed before you started that level, that people lived there, that they ate there, that they slept there, that they made a mess and knocked things over and coffee fell on the floor, and then more importantly for the narrative, these demons turned up and then everyone died. That needs to read through the environment, not just what you're seeing. So in the concept of artwork, I know I am definitely a victim of this. A lot of what I design is surface level. So when I'm creating an environment painting, I create maybe a, the sci-fi center console with a screen, but I won't add anything else that's necessary. So I might not consider maybe how the person might sit down, where they would put their cup of coffee, how they might need to use their arms, the ergonomics. With sci-fi elements, I think that's really important, and I think that works across any theme. So if you think in more depth about how the space is being used, it's going to improve your designs. So going back to the point of it being a cohesive world, all of the designs work well together. They all look like they are from the same world. Now that obviously is partly an art director's role, is to make sure everything is meshing together, everything's working. But if you can do that as a concept artist, then you're going to be beneficial to that studio environment. There are design aesthetics that are being used throughout that allows the entire game to be cohesive. So as a rule, there are sharp geometric forms being created. These are being softened by the use of bevels, which allows light to bounce off in different directions, which softens the design, as well as incorporating cylinders for pipes and general sci-fi assets. When looking at some of the modeling in this game, they look very complex, and there are a lot of individual set pieces in corners that have been taken a lot of time to make them look like they have function. And that's one of the things I really like in this game. So as an example, you might see a wall and in a different game or an older game, you might have just maybe a blank wall texture. You'd have some blood thrown up on the wall. But in this game, they have these pod systems where you've seen these cylinders being slotted in where some of them are missing, some of them are damaged or been dropped. It adds to the overall narrative. It's part of the concept art's role to create those kind of assets. So using your imagination to create basically a set piece that would have been an otherwise boring section of the room that you can probably walk past and never look at. But the fact that they've taken the time to do that adds to the world building and adds to the overall theming of the space. When you walk through these spaces, the amount of modeling is really detailed, it's really impressive. Another way to add cohesion in a world is through color. So in this sci-fi game, there's obviously going to be used a lot of greys because of metal, but there's always an additional colour for a bit of a pop because too much grey would just be really dull and it'd lack contrast. So in this game they have used yellow quite a lot. You've then got additional lighting which is going to be adding 
greens, blues, reds. So that really adds depth as well. But when you're designing your own worlds in this sense, try to limit your color palette as much as possible while still making it look interesting. So when you go outside in this world, you're hit with this sandy, strong, like Mars um, red or burnt orange color, which I think works really well. I think it's really iconic. So if you can limit your color palette maybe to two colors like they kind of have in this game, I think that can be really achievable in paintings. It's really easy and it can look really impressive. When looking at the texture work, I think this adds again another layer of the storytelling in the game. Walking through the spaces, it doesn't feel like this was just created for you to walk through. It felt like it was already there. It felt like a real world. They have achieved that by making sure that absolutely nothing in the scene is pristine. For one, there is dirt, grime, blood, oil absolutely everywhere. It makes it feel like these demons have rampaged through this building. The next thing is that it feels realistic. So you'll see text and phrases on the side of drinks units, on the side of machinery. It might be how to use a machinery or maybe safety information. You walk around a town, you'll see so much text, usually through advertisement, that I feel like this is presented quite well in this game. Um, it adds another sense of realism and depth. It's worth considering that everything in this world needs designing. Your job day to day as a concept artist might not be particularly glamorous, but you need to find the fun in creating kind of boring assets. So in this game, they do a really amazing job of making even crates, stairs, just the general pipes, the machinery, all of that look really impressive. It might not be what you want to design when you're thinking about your dream job, but it is part of the role. And you can tell the people that created this really did enjoy it and really found a purpose to creating those, you know, what you would class as boring assets to find narratives with them and build on the world rather than just kind of phone it in and create something, just throw it in. I, I love that they took the time and effort to, to work on every single asset in this game. So if you want to challenge, do that yourself. If you're thinking about creating a game world, design a, a cube that works in the style of whatever game you're creating. So if it's a Western, you know, design, design a wooden crate, but don't make it just a boring wooden crate. Develop it, add a narrative, you know, push it further than you might normally push something. And if art directors see that in a portfolio, it, it shows a level of design knowledge that you can take something really boring and improve it. Everyone can make a really cool character look cool in an illustration but being able to use design techniques to improve on a basic concept is really beneficial in a portfolio. I walked into this scene and knew I wanted to record this video and it's relatively early on in the game because this room just is just filled with narrative. You can tell by the runners around the top of the ceiling how those carriages move and the fact that it's part way through the process, one of them has moved and stopped. So the people that were in that room started that process and then when they were probably killed, the process stopped and it hasn't moved since. I absolutely love that. I love that they took the time to make that machinery look like it had a purpose. And it just goes back to this point, I just keep saying that everything in this world has a purpose. They could have easily just had crates in that room that didn't look like they moved. There was no runners above them to, to show where they would go and it would be fine, but it just wouldn't have the level of detail that we're seeing here in this game. So stupidly, I didn't get any footage of the demons themselves in the gameplay, mainly because I didn't want to show how bad I am at shooting in this game. But I just want to talk about them just for one moment and how important silhouette is for characters in a very fast paced game like this. So each character, each demon or type of demon in this game has different ways of killing them and different strategies that you should use and different weapons that you should use to kill them which means you need to understand what those demons are very quickly in a very fast paced game. The only way you can do that is by silhouette or colour. Now with silhouette, you know, you're talking about size and shape. With colour, obviously if one of them is purple and one of them is green, you're going to see that pretty quickly and you'll understand how you need to attack that creature. If you're doing character designs, always bear that in mind, especially in something where it's like this, where it's a first person shooter and you're reacting very quickly, 
always remember that your characters need to read unbelievably fast. So if you're doing a character design, make sure the silhouette reads really well, the forms of it read really well, and always consider color to separate different characters. Just something to add on to silhouettes when talking about characters. It's worth bearing in mind that that's also been done with the UI, with the weapon design. So as you can see here, the freeze frame where you choose what weapon you want, obviously you, you learn where the weapons are and what they are, but they want you to be able to read what those weapons are very quickly. So the silhouette of the weapon has to be really recognizable. So again, it's just, if there's anything that's where there are multiples in a game, you want them to be distinguishable. So if you have played this game, then you know that green is used as a symbol to represent in what direction you need to go. So if you see a green light, you're probably heading in that direction. I think it's really worth remembering that when you're creating your own designs, imagine them being full games. Imagine them being used by a player and that you need to communicate an idea. You're not just creating a pretty image. So break it down into those elements. If, if someone stepped into your world, would they understand what they need to do or where they need to go? If you can create that level of communication in a piece, it will be successful. So I think the only negative I can really think of with the design is sometimes there's too many glowing lights in a scene and it distracts me, it leads me into areas that maybe I shouldn't have been looking at. So I might walk up to a random wall thinking I need to press it or find something there and I don't, it's just a glowing light on a random asset. It shows the attention of detail and how much they were willing to add, but I feel like sometimes they push that slightly too far with lighting. It looks great, it's really appealing, and I'm sure that's why it was added, but sometimes I'll go up to an object that I shouldn't have. So that's worth bearing in mind, if you don't want the viewer to look at something, if you don't want in-game them to, to go up to that, then don't make it glow, or don't draw the eye too much. So the main thing that I find really impressive in this game with the design is how the sci-fi industrial elements look like they could work. And I, I keep mentioning that, but it's worth considering you can tell that the people that created this game used industrial, real industrial machinery as reference because there's a level of complexity that makes these machines and assets feel like they exist in the real world. I feel like you can only do that if you have a good understanding of real machinery. These machines don't exist in the real world, but if you look at big industrial drills or diggers, they're really good inspiration. So always make sure you're using research and reference when you're creating concepts, designs in whatever style you're creating. Even if you feel like it doesn't exist, trust me, it does. There's something out there that can be used as reference. So this has been a really quick breakdown obviously I can go into way more detail but I feel like I'll just keep saying the same points and probably bore you to death if I do that so I'm going to leave it there hopefully this was really useful for someone I'm hoping you guys maybe are thinking about these things in a different way than you would have previously it might might allow you next time you pick up a game to really consider how you would analyze it and use it in your own work I feel like a lot of students who haven't entered the industry yet struggle to think about these kind of things in detail. Most people are thinking so much about how to technically produce a piece of art, they ignore the design and it's why you're being hired, you are there to design, you're there to communicate an idea not to create beautiful images. So having a good understanding of how games are produced and why they've made the decisions they've made I think is really beneficial. So hopefully you agree and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. These videos are a little faster to make than me producing artwork obviously so if you've liked this video please let me know in the comments if you want to see more in maybe different games let me know. I'd love to do more of them. I find it really uh, interesting and I've, I definitely learn a lot more when I'm kind of going into more depth looking at these games so I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already and you want to see more of my content, please do hit the notification bell if you want to see more and I will catch you in the next one.